really did not thank Will enough for coming up from Atlanta. I mean, he came up just to do a presentation for us about tiny houses. And the reason that we've asked him is because when you listen to his presentation, he's involved in the Atlanta RICO process, and you're going to hear him talk about zoning and these same things that we just mentioned that do what for us? Make us money and move the city of Knoxville forward. The list of questions are all questions that I have heard at one time or another discussed about tiny homes. So you should, you should be able to get answers to every question on there by the end of this meeting so that you can help share the information that the NBC and the city council are trying to get out. So with that, Will Johnson. Thank you, Victor. Um, so good evening, everyone. I'm Will Johnston. I'm with the Microlife Institute. I am the executive director and founder. And you probably ask, what the hell is the Microlife Institute? Well, I made it up. So I get to basically create my life right now. Um, it's been a four year journey until this point. Yes, I started the tiny houses on wheels movement, but it has expanded into accessory drawing unit, carriage houses, micro housing, missing middle housing, just innovative housing concepts to allow people to live the life and where they want to live. So the idea just kind of, I, I did this whole thing that basically what you probably don't want your kids to do or what you never thought you would do is just quit your job, sell everything, and just get on a plane. So five years ago I did that, ended up in New Zealand, backpacking and working on vineyards, it was a lot of fun. And when I came back to Atlanta, I just discovered I love not owning anything. And it was just this freeing feeling, I was like, wow, I don't have to like worry about having an extra room for that piano that my, my great aunt left me or, or, or just the extra stuff that you collect. And I wanted to know who else was doing this. Hence me coming across the tiny house movement. Now, why are people interested in downsizing? Why are people interested in actually living in, let's say, 250 square feet to 1,000 square feet? Why are people wanting to go tiny? And these are kind of the biggest buckets of this movement. Because what I do, I'm talking about the passion. I'm talking about the people, because if you find the experiential part of what you do, people will come to you. People will rent from you. People will buy from you, because they are looking for an experience for their life. They're looking for a better life. And if you can provide them with a product, and I hate calling it a product, it's a home. People are looking for homes. They're looking for homes that will propel, will, will, that will propel them forward. And these buckets is kind of the biggest part of that movement. So obviously, in a smaller space, you save time. Don't have to clean as much. Don't have to maintain as much. You get more life back. You also save more money. Smaller space, smaller heating bills, smaller cooling bills. Also, there's a huge spectrum of people really liking its, its sustainable impact, reducing your carbon footprint. Smaller home, less building materials, less uh, money it takes to pay your uh, cooling and heating, which also takes electricity, which goes right back to a coal electric plant. So there's this huge spectrum of people really wanting to downsize. Also, you've got that interesting spectrum. Of, I'm going to jump around different facts, weave in stories through this presentation because it's just fascinating. Everyone's like, oh, I know exactly who this is for. Who can tell me who do they think this market is for? Thank you. Single people. Millennials. You. Retirees. Millennials. Students. Students. So again, you're talking about bookends. There we go. All right. So we're going into who's interested in this. So we did, so a part of what the Microlife Institute does, we do research. And one of the surveys that we did last year, we had 1,400 people take this survey online because we wanted to know who these people were who wanted to downsize or who wanted to just live in a smaller space. And we had 41% professional, that is salary-based employees, wanted to live in a space between 400 and 650 square feet. That was, they blew my mind. I was like, really? Uh, and plus if you act, uh, add the contract and freelance, that's still a part of the professional. So you're looking at 52% of the people who, take, who took this survey is interested in living in a quite small space. <clears throat> now, age. 
I know I'm sorry for the smaller graph. We thought, again, there was going to be retirees. We thought it was going to be millennial. We thought it was going to be the bookend of life. Right now, you're looking at pretty much, on average, the most, I believe, was 13%. And that was the 25 to 29-year-olds. And then the 7% was the 60 to 64. So it was fascinating to me that almost every generation was almost equal that they're wanting to be able to downsize. I have a ton of retirees talking to me saying, when is that micro retirement village going to come about? When are people going to start building the size that I want instead of the size that they just built? There's a huge demand of wanting that smaller, attainable, and affordable, as well as easy to maintain product. 